Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review that was requested by a couple of viewers. Um, I had seen these Phoenix watercolors show up on Amazon about a month ago, and I was curious about them, but the price was a little uh, high for me. I am familiar with the Phoenix brand. They are a company that private labels products for other, um, other art companies, especially like kind of new and upcoming art companies or art companies that have store, like kind of their own store label or their store lines um, that are a little bit less expensive and we actually have a store in our town or not our town but a town a town away town or two away um, called Ocean State Job Lot that has Phoenix products it actually has a pretty decent art supply line or art supply aisle and they carry Phoenix watercolors Phoenix pastels Phoenix watercolor canvas Phoenix pads of paper and it just is kind of like an affordable store brand kind of um, I actually purchased their set of uh, 24 cake watercolors so they're like watercolors but they're round not square and they're more like what you would see school children use and they were fantastic they were five dollars they were an amazing paint for that price and um and I was very excited to find them. And then I did some digging because I was looking up that company to see what else they made. And it was very difficult to find any information like as a consumer about this company. And pretty much everything was in, um, uh, let's see, I believe, I believe they're made in China. Yeah, it was in Chinese. And I apologize because I, I can't really tell the difference between different Asian um, uh, printing. That usually doesn't come up when you're searching in the United States for products. So I couldn't find anything really like for an American consumer there, like as far as information about what their products are and what they offered. Maybe there's more now. This is back when I first discovered this brand at Ocean State Job Lot. So I was so excited about those. I actually bought their tube watercolors that they sold a set of, I think, 24 tubes for, I think it was $10. And I didn't like them. I wasn't very impressed with them. They actually reminded me a lot of the Meaden watercolors and some other store brand watercolors that I've used before that I just, eh, you know, they were fine, but they weren't anything I was ever going to use. So, um, so I got rid of those. Uh, but then I saw that they were selling half pan sets on Amazon. And the first thing that caught my eye, and I have to be very careful about bias when I'm when I'm reviewing products and when I'm looking at stuff online because some things will look, I, I just tend to look for similarities. What does this look like? What does it seem like? And the first thing that caught my eye was that the branding, the Phoenix branding with the Phoenix uh, line art reminded me a lot of Windsor & Newton. And um, like Windsor Newton has the, well, here's one of my Windsor Newton old watercolor palettes. It's got the Griffin, uh, the Griffin logo. For some reason, the font of the Windsor Newton, the font of the watercolors there, and the um, the Griffin reminded me a lot of the Phoenix. So just like at a quick glance, it kind of reminded me of Windsor Newton's branding. Um, but again, I tried to put that out, out of my mind because I don't like to be biased when, I, um, when I'm looking at products. So in this, I got this set of 12 because this was like 16 something and the set of 48 was about $40. And I'm like, ugh, I don't want to spend 40 bucks if it's going to be like their two paints that I really wasn't impressed with. And I have so many watercolors already that it's like I don't want to spend 40 bucks on a paint set that I'm never going to use again. So I'm like, well, I'll get the 12 set. I think they offer 12, 24, 36, and 48. I'll get the 12 set and I'll see what I think. I mean, I can always upgrade if I want, but I'll probably be able to get a pretty decent um, opinion of the paints with that. And generally, with your smaller sets, they uh, they put in the most use usable colors. So I thought I would do that. Sometimes when you get a big set of watercolors and they offer different sizes, um, it was pretty interesting because I reviewed a set of 24 watercolors. It was a private label made by the same, I think, the Superior Company. And another reviewer had reviewed the set of 48. And because there were so many kind of throwaway, junky colors in the set of 48, her overall rating of that set was poor. But I had the set of 24, and they were all really useful colors. So my set, my review was pretty positive because it didn't include those junky colors that were in the larger set. So anyway, I was cheap, and I got the 12 set. <laughs> um, and I have to say, when I was using them, my first swatches, I was feeling pretty good about it. I'm like, wow, those are pretty vibrant. Um, you know, and granted, this was a $16 set. And for quite a while, I mean, if this was 10 years ago, a $16 set, I'd be thrilled that I was getting these kind of results. But as you know, over the past like five years or so, there's been a lot of decent watercolor sets flooding the market that are pretty decent in that price range. In fact, um, Primo Marketing started putting out their tins and they were like 16 bucks on Amazon at the beginning. And um, I mean, we were all crazy. We were buying them just to get the empty tins because at that time the tins were so expensive to just buy an empty tin, it would be, you know, sometimes 30 bucks. It was crazy. Um, it's amazing how prices have dropped over the last like five or eight years or so. Uh, so I, I swatched them out with, and I and I stuck their little labels down because there is pigment information, which is a, a big bonus in the, um, you know, when you get a set of 
on the budget side paints uh, for them to include pigment information. That's awesome. Um, I, you know, I swatched them on cotton paper with a sw uh, stripe of marker so that I could see how opaque they were, how transparent they were, how their glazing worked. They glazed well, they lift pretty decently, um, but I did have a few issues that I didn't like. So some of the choices here that was in this set, um, and granted I do have the little brochure here that has the full 48 range, so I think if I had the larger range I probably would have felt a little more favorably, but like they put a cerulean blue in here, but it's not a true cerulean, it's PB15 with clearly it must have white in it because it's so um, so not intense and through and a PB15 should be very intense. That they, that's the low blue. Um, and it was able to lift up, so it's obviously got a lot of fillers in it. So it's like, why not just put a phthalo blue? That's a pretty cheap pigment to include in a watercolor set. So I didn't understand why they would put that in there, because it's not going to be as useful as mixing. It's going to make mixes more muddy. Um, I'll show you mixes in a minute. Um, so I was kind of disappointed in that. Um, I was also disappointed in the fact that they put emerald green rather than a phthalo green because phthalo green either a straight PG7 or a straight PG36 uh, because that would be so much more transparent and vibrant and would be easy to mix and it's a pretty cheap color it's not like it's an expensive color um, I have to there's this one's a mix of PG7 and PY175 the print is very small I've been using a magnifier for most of my research on this um, so I'm like why don't you just put a PG7 just a straight they low blue and then uh, they low green rather and then they put in a uh, hooker's green deep I would have preferred a sap green but I mean I'm okay with that there's you know there's several yellows I can I can work with those greens like if this was a PG7 or a PG36 straight I could add either of those yellows make gorgeous greens I could um, even add a little bit of the red to it to make it earthier it's just more versatile I so I was disappointed that you've got two greens and these are the two you chose these are like arguably not the most too useful greens to put in a set of 12. Um, so that was my gripe. Another gripe I had was um, that the Burnt Umber is not a straight PBR7, it is a mix of PBR7 and PY42. And we have Yellow Ochre, which is PY42. Why would you not put in a straight uh, PBR7 pigment here? Burnt, that's, that's, that's a typical Burnt Umber. And I was thinking something seems familiar about these paints and I couldn't quite place my finger on it. The texture of the paints, the way the pans looked, the way the pans were rattling around in here, it was the smaller pans like the Windsor Newton, like Windsor Newton uses. It's just slightly tapered and smaller than the, um, the typical half pan that we're, that we're used to. Um, they also fit the portable painter. They also use that size pan. Um, I, in, in the other stuff, I thought it was fine. I thought it was weird. I'm like, why is this, why are there three reds? Why, a cool red and a warm red, that's all you need. Why do we have this additional red? We don't need both of those two slightly warm reds. And this one is PR3, which is a color you don't usually see in, um, in paint. Um, it's a, I believe it's fugitive, and it doesn't, it has an, an A, like not available for light fast ratings. Then I noticed some of these colors said not available, because I was looking at the bigger, the bigger swatch here to see what other colors would be available in the 48 set, and I was noticing out of all the 48 colors that 21 of them were single pigment. It's like, that's great, why don't you put some of those single, single more of those single, oh my gosh, I can't talk, I'm so wound up, I'm so wound up guys, I've been doing so much research on this set, I've had it for a couple of weeks, and I just have, I've just, something's been bugging me about it, I can't put my finger on it, but finally I could today, and we, you'll have to stay tuned for the gripping conclusion, I guess, oh boy, you're probably just, this is way too granular, am I too in the weeds, I'm sorry if so, if you were just looking for a, a, a quick answer, but I feel like I want to put this information out there, because I think it's important, um, so I'm like, PR, why would you use PR3? That's like, I, I think that might even be like a cosmetics pigment or a, a food pigment or something. It's not something you typically see in artist quality paint. You might see it in craft quality paint if they, if the company decides to reveal their pigment information, which a lot of them don't because a lot of them are pri private labeled and they might not even think to print it or think to ask about it or maybe the consumer doesn't care. But, um, I mean, as artists, we're curious, aren't we? We're curious. We love cheap paint. We want to see if there's some like hidden gem or some bargain that we've missed. At least I do. I don't know. I'm very curious about this sort of thing. So I was like, well, that's weird. So I started going through their brochure and something was feeling so familiar about this. Man, even this brochure feels familiar. What is it? And I just, I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. So um, I made a little swatch for my tin so I would know exactly where everything is because some of the colors like the purple and brown are almost hard to tell apart because they're so dark, which is a good sign. You want your colors in the pans to look darker than they are because it shows you the transparent. So I'm like, okay, something, the pans look familiar. The pan size is familiar. The wrappers even feel familiar. And that brown 
branding looks very similar to another brand. And I'm like, hmm. So I started using them. Um, the first thing I did was some mixes. Uh, I did, well, first thing I did was the swatches. And then I did some mixes. I mixed the cool primaries together, the Cerulean, the Permanent Rose, and the Lemon. And they mixed really nice. And together I got a nice neutral gray. I mixed my warm reds, uh, my Cad Red Hue, my um, Ultramarine Blue, and my um, Cad Yellow Hue. Yep, Cad Yellow Hue, and I got a nice brown with the three of those, and I got Earthy mixes. Okay, not unhappy about that. I had a little bit of shininess where I had a really thick application, but not shiny enough for me to make it, they think it's like a Ganzai color. So I'm like, they're not reminding me of Ganzai Tambay. What's what's the deal? What are these reminding me of? The texture of the pans are very distinct. Um, they're not like a Mungio, which Mungio private labels a lot of people's paints, but they have more of a gritty surface to them, and they're much more opaque, and they don't layer layer well. Um, they lift super easily. It's like almost impossible to layer them um, because they get, they, you don't see the layers because they're more opaque and they want to lift up so easily. So it's not like, uh, not like Mungio. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, there's my Burnt Umber and Ultramarine mix. I got some nice granulation. That's pretty. I'm happy with these mixes. That pretty turquoise with the, um, with the blue and the green. That was pretty. De decent flow. I mean, not over the top, not flow like Mungio. They have a crazy flow or Prima because they make their paints. Um, you know, I was pretty happy with all the paints flowed together. I did kind of wet an area and just kind of dabbed in color. Yeah, it's flowing fine. No problems. Um, I did, uh, I used them on this card here. I'm not going to take it out of the cellophane because I've had, I've been picking up pants, so I probably have paint under my fingernails, but yeah, it, it's fine. It worked fine for craft applications. I used it on this, um, on this painting here um, from, uh, this is one of my figure drawing challenge things I posted on Instagram. Lifted up really well, uh, layered okay, um, no qualms. It was actually really nice for doing figures because it was easy to lift out highlights, um, which is kind of nice if you're doing figures. And then I just did a little imagination seascape today. And, um, you know, it, they worked fine. And I'm like, you know, I'm not happy with some of the colors they chose, but the paints themselves seem fine. Yeah, I get it. I think if I had a larger set, I'd be happier with them. And then I'm just, I was doing my last bit of research, comparing them with paints I already had. I try not to be biased when I'm reviewing, so I try not to jump to conclusions. And I came across the, <laughs> my big swatch of Cotman watercolors. And, um, and actually I looked on Amazon and I was looking at reviews to see if anybody else had anything. And this is after I'd kind of gathered all my information. I want to see what other people were saying about these paints. So I looked on Amazon and somebody posted, they're so much better than my Cotman's. And I thought, that's what they remind me of. And no, they're, they are identical to my Cotman's. Uh, that's what they remind me of. Now I was, so this is my swatch. A Cotman only has 40 colors. So the, so I went through my swatch and my little pan wrappers that I saved and taped down to my swatch. This is the first time I actually did that because a viewer of, a viewer of mine, um, Afke, she's from, uh, I probably mispronounced her name. Every time I say her name, I'm like, I mispronounced it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, um, she says, you can call me Eve. <laughs> Um, but she's like, she's like, oh, I save my wrappers and I tape them down and then I do my swatch chart. And I thought that was brilliant. So I have to, I credit her every time I, I mention that because it is such a great way to do it. And I also saved the brochure and I'm like, you know what? That brochure is laid out and so similar to the brochure for the Phoenix. Now you're thinking, Lindsay, come on, that's a stretch your squares with information underneath that really. Um, so then I went, I went square by square because I don't have all 48 colors of the Phoenix, but I do have the brochure with all the information. Out of the 48 colors, Cotman's only a line of 40. They have every single one of the 40. Now, Windsor Newton, any of their Thalo colors, Windsor Newton calls intense rather than Thalo, so that's the only discrepancy. Uh, I think that's a proprietary name. So, like, instead of Thalo Blue, Windsor, New Windsor Newton calls it intense blue. Instead of Thalo Green, it's intense green. Other than that, all the names um, matched out of the 40 that I have for Cotman and the 40 here. And get this, the pigment mixes are identical. So I thought that was really interesting because what are the chances? I mean, I mean, sure, every every company's gonna have a ultramarine blue that's PB29 or a thalo blue that's PB15. I mean, or and a yellow ochre that's PY42. I mean, that's that's to be expected. But the mixes, there are um, out of the out of the uh, 48 colors. Um, 27 are mixes and those 27 that are here there are identical pigment combinations and that's just too uncanny and the fact that the textures feel the same and they lay down the same and they lift the same and just the feel of them is so similar i think they're the same paints now interestingly when the cotton paints used to be made in france along with all the other windsor newton products and about um 
oh gosh, was it five, five or 10 years ago, they shifted the operations of the Cotman paints to be made in China. And I always said that I thought about the time Windsor Newton outsourced their Cotman line of products to be made in China. That's when the bar seemed to get lifted in China or raised. And it seemed like there were so many really great cheap paints coming out of China that coincided when Windsor Newton outsourced their paint manufacturing to China for their for the Cotman line, not for all of it. I believe their artist line is still made in um, in France. And it was funny because I ordered these. I thought, wow, this is too good to be true. It was a few years ago. It was probably five or six years ago. I um, we, we could look back and we could find the review on the Cotman paints. Uh, I think I did a new versus old Cotman paints because I have these, this old set, the American set, was always the, the uh, I'm sorry, I have a squeaky chair, don't I? Uh, the American set of Cotman was um, full pans and they contained real cobalt in real cadmium colors. And I loved this set of paints. I used it quite a bit. I refilled some of the colors. I just thought they were fantastic. And I always taught with Cotman paints. So I was very familiar with how Cotman paints are. When I taught back in the 90s, um, I could buy the big tubes of Cotman paints and I would fill my students' palettes with them. And they were just such a great value. I, I really enjoyed them. And I did feel like the Cotman paints changed a little bit over the years, but it wasn't enough for me to kind of really think too much about it. So I ordered these on Amazon. There's actually, you get 45 in the set, but five of them are duplicates of uh, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue. Um, oh gosh, what is the other ones? Um, burnt sienna and maybe Payne's gray. I can't remember, but the, probably the five most common colors are duplicated. And I just put those in other smaller tins. Uh, the Prima tins, actually, where there's room to put more down the middle. Um, I just added those to sets that needed a little more flushing out. Um, but when I got this box, the outer box that came in, there was a, a sticker that said Made in China on the back, and I peeled off the sticker, and under that sticker said Made in France. So it was right when they were, um, it must have been right when they were changing over from being made in France to made in China, and they had to change their packaging. So these are Chinese-made Windsor Newton Cotmans. Now, Windsor Newton also makes a, um, a lower grade below the Cotman, um, for the Chinese market, and their junk, from what I understand, there's another YouTuber that does, um, I'm thinking his name is Alan J. Watercolors, and he has reviewed that Chinese set of Windsor Newton paints, and they look to me so much like the Phoenix, ones that I bought at Ocean State Job Lot that were junk. Um, so I'm thinking those probably are both made in China, and then the Windsor Newton artists are made in um, in France still. But um, but I was like, man, the texture seems the same. Even, this, even the pans, let's take a couple pans here. I'm gonna take the yellow ochre. Um, now keep in mind, I have used these, well, I probably used them both the same, really, because I've been using this that 12 set a lot, and I didn't use that too much after I got it. I kind of was got it out of curiosity. Um, the pans are the same. They're that tapered, um, that tapered, thin walled plastic that fits in like the portable painter. Now the Windsor Newton prints on their pans, which is awesome. Um, the the Phoenix doesn't. They just have a PH on the bottom of their pan to mark it as a Phoenix pan. So I just wrote down the pigment numbers uh, on the single pigment ones because I couldn't fit more than that on the other ones. Um, but uh, but very similar. And these are they're both extruded paints, meaning they kind of come out of a machine and they're sliced to go in to fit into the pans. Um, and they can look great. Sometimes they're not. It's a little deceiving. They look like they come way out of the pan, but it could just be how they've. Um, they could be kind of hollow underneath, but you, I mean, it's, you get what you're waiting for, bottom line. Um, but anyways, I thought that was really interesting. So I had to dig out my, my, uh, Cotman's to see. So this is why this review has taken me so long because I've, <laughs> I put a lot of time into it. So then I thought, well, um, I cannot now, now I'm down the rabbit hole of comparing the Cotman and Phoenix. All the pigment numbers are the same. The colors that I have match the colors from my swatch. Then I'm like, I gotta swatch them side by side. So 11 of the colors from that set of 12 Phoenix watercolors matched my Windsor Newton Common colors exactly, pigment and everything. So I'm like, I gotta swatch them side by side and look. So I swatched them all side by side. The 11 that matched, there was a, oh, and any of the colors that were not from the Cotman range that is in the Phoenix range on their brochure, if they don't match, they say NA for light fast inf information. So they are completely copying over the light fast information from the Cotman, which I imagine if Windsor Newton, now, okay, this is, I have to say, I have to disclaim this is speculative because I don't work for Windsor Newton. I don't work for um, Phoenix. I have no connection with either of those companies. I don't know anyone who works for either of those companies personally. Um, so I have no ties with either of those companies. So what all of this is speculation. Um, but all of the colors here on this, 
brochure from Phoenix listing their 48 colors, any of them that do not correspond with the 40 colors that Cotman offers by Winsor Newton have NA for their lightness, light fastness information, and all of the other colors have light fastness information that matches, like they permanence A. These will say permanence A, permanence A, permanence A, permanence A. They all match. Um, permanence AA, permanence AA. So they're using the same terminology, they're using the same pigment information, um, except on things that are not Cotman, they just put NA for they don't know the light fast information, they haven't done the testing or or whatever, because that's expensive, that's, you know, that's probably something you wouldn't do for a, a set of inexpensive paints. So I just wanted to put that out there, I thought that was very interesting and, and, and uncanny, uncanny with the fact that the even the even the brochure goes in order. The colors go in order with what is from um, is what is from Windsor and Newton. So it's like wow, it, there's just too many similarities. So then I swatched out the Windsor and Newton Cotman compared to the Phoenix. The only thing that didn't seem exact was the emerald, and I think the emerald. I think their pigment numbers might be in the, a different order. This says no nah, PG seven PY one seven five, and then for Windsor and Newton. Um, for Emerald, they got PG-175 and PG-7, so they've got the pigments reversed on Cotman, and the Cotman also seems a little more yellow, so maybe they they swapped that, and I did notice on a couple colors the same pigments, but they were swapped, like on maybe three colors, so that one is more yellowy, and that could be why, because they have the yellow pigment listed first for Cotman, and they have the green pigment listed first for, um, uh, for Phoenix. So I'm wondering if once they got the recipe for Windsor & Newton, if they just decided, hey, this is a great way to make paints, it's popular, it's a good quality paint, it works well, let's take that research and use it towards our products. And I think that's what's happened. I think that's why you can find so many really decent cheap paints out of China. Um, we know there's been intellectual property um, discrepancies or problems. I mean, our laws are different than their laws as far as intellectual property. So, uh, and that's, I mean, the, and Windsor Newton is a British company, I believe, and they have their stuff made in France, as I recall. Why am I looking at this? This is not Windsor Newton. I don't, let's see, actually, can I see, at least I can take the brochure out of my thing. So, Cotman Watercolors. Um, Windsor Newton is based out of London in the UK. Um, but their products were made in France. Like, even this brochure says made in France. Um, they came with my Cotman watercolors, but the box had a sticker on it that said made in China. So it might have been right around the same time that they, that they swapped over. Um, so I think that's interesting. I think that that's one of the reasons why there's so many good quality watercolors coming out for cheap from China. I think it is piggybacking on the recipes that they're getting when, um, Western brands have outsourced their stuff to China. So, bottom line, so now that you've listened to me talk about these, these nuance of these different paints and where they come from and what I suspect is the is their root and what they, I suspect they are the same as, do I recommend these Phoenix watercolors? Well, I have to say, I've always liked Cotman. I've always liked Cotman paints. Um, and Cotman paints to get this, this set here of 45, only 40 unique colors, I think is probably around 50 bucks on Amazon. Actually, I could look it up. Um, the set of 48 Cotman, uh, Phoenix in the metal tin is under 40. I think it, they had coupons on running today, um, so they're actually less than what I paid. I think this set is around 14 now, and it was like 16 something when I bought it. Um, so, you know, things fluctuate on Amazon. You can't really, but we can get a ballpark. I'm going to go over to Amazon right now. And uh, there, this set right here is $36.99. Oh, the 48 set is $36.99. I'm going to look at Cotman Watercolor and see if those are available still and what they're going for. And um, let's see, the 12 set is going for $18.46. And I'm looking to see if they have the 48 set available. Um, oh wow, there's so many different iterations of the of the Cotman set for different prices. Oh man. Um, so I mean, I like the Cotman set, but I think if you already have the Cotman set, that's what I, I that's pretty much what you're getting. You're getting Cotman quality paint. I don't want to say the same just in case um, there is some sort of sort of issue. Yes. Okay. So the uh, the forty set of Cotman is currently sixty around 66 bucks, so the Phoenix is a better deal. I believe it's the same paint. I don't think it's better. Like that, that one reviewer, um, 
uh, said, but so if you get a good deal on something and it performs really well, you can perceive it as better. Um, I think they're the exact same paint as the Winsor Newton Cotman. Um, I actually, I kind of wish I got the bigger set just so I can compare, but I will be looking at Ocean State Job Lot. Maybe they'll get them in for like 20 bucks or something, because uh, I certainly don't need them where I have the 40 set of the Windsor Newton Cotman's and I rarely use that. But um, but that is my that is my review. Yes, I recommend them if you are looking for a Cotman quality paint. Um, that said, I think there are better quality, cheaper paints that are going to work better for you. Uh, like for instance, the Pretty Excellent paints. Um, they are around $22 for 36 colors, but the colors are so vibrant and intense and um, and gorgeous that I would recommend them, them over Cotman. I would rec them, recommend them over Phoenix. The downside is you're, there's no pigment information or light fastness information, and you can actually get the pigment and light fastness information with the Phoenix paints or with the Cotman paints for that matter. So um, I'd say if you're looking for a replacement of your Cotmans, yeah, go for the Phoenix. I think you're you're going to be very happy with that. Um, just keep in mind some of those um, those colors that are not corresponding with the Cotman colors. Just look at the pigments and do your own determination whether you think they're going to be light fast or not. I would say they're solid student grade paint. Um, I don't even know if I'd put them in the budget realm because I think a budget paint, or nowadays I think of a 48 set for like 20 bucks being a budget paint and these being kind of more student grade. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I recommend them. I don't necessarily recommend this 12 color set because I feel like the color choices are not the best. If I would say you're better off getting the 12 color set of Windsor Newton Cotman because their their color their 12 color set makes way more sense than this. Even though there's a white and a black in it, the the primaries are a much better selection. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's basically what you're getting. Um, they they didn't knock my socks off, but they didn't like disappoint me or disgust me either. And the more I dug in and the more I used them, I'm thinking they're the same as Cotman paint. So there you have it. Um, <laughs> Boy, this is a long video. I hope you found it helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. I'll put as much information as I can in the video description and on my blog so you can um, kind of do your research. If I find these for 20 bucks at Ocean State, the set of 48, I'm, I'm snagging them up, but I don't think I would pay 40 bucks for another set so similar to the one I have from Cotman already. But, uh, but we're all different, so it might be just what you're looking for. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.